All right, here we go again. First stop on this one was Templeteville. I grabbed a scrap piece of plywood, laid it down, just kind of laid out all my measurements, a center mark first, and I grabbed my bevel gauge because I want the ends of this to kind of bevel in about five degrees. Then I can mark out both ends, and I use my iMac monitor just to get the radius of the corners that I wanted. And then a little more layout to get the shape that I was after. I use my track saw to cut those angles, and then at this point, oh boy. That's not right. I wasn't supposed to cut there. Oh, and sorry, Rockler, I wasn't supposed to cut through that either. So, we'll have to glue that piece back on. Then I could round off those corners on the spindle sander, get them nice and smooth. And with that, I could start prepping the actual walnut for the build. A little surface prep reveals, ooh, a lovely shade of walnut. And if you ever wondered what a jointer looks like from the side view, there it is. And a slightly bird's eye view of the planer. And a backseat view of the bandsaw as we resaw this walnut in half. And would you look at that? A two for one sale. I did a little more surface prep on those to get the mill marks off, off camera. And then it was time to glue up the two sections. And here's where things went a little squirrely on me. Since I didn't have long enough walnut to get the full length of the piece I wanted, I decided on this little middle section. And... We'll reveal later what happened there. And here I'm laying out for the bottom support section that will house the wireless charger from my phone. Using a little more walnut, I determined the angle there was 13 degrees. So here you can see basically a little walnut girt on its side. Then to glue this up, I attach some glue blocks to give me some nice lateral pressure on those glue joints. As you can see. Oh, forgot about that little filler strip there. And then just played a little whack-a-mole to get all those blocks off. Now to cover the visual end grain on my walnut yurt, I just sliced off a little piece of Robert Veneero and glued that onto the top. Used a little green tape to secure it because blue tape is, well, pretty played out at this point. And just in case I ever forgot who this monitor stand belonged to, I decided to put my logo medallion right front and center. I've been told that's called branding. So with my vanity at an all-time high, I took the walnut pieces and headed over to the table saw to trim them to final length and get them squared up. For speed and ease, I decided on using the domino to glue up the walnut ends with the center section. And since I found it a little difficult to clamp up that white oak section, I just used double stick tape to stick it down, made my mortises, started slinging some glue and I know what you're saying what are you doing there you got end grain of walnut to long grain of white oak uh, have you ever heard of wood movement well stay tuned because I will be heading into the confession booth and fully admit to my numb scullery but before I do that let's template route our monitor stand using double-sided tape stuck that down and then I'm just using a magic marker just to give me kind of an eighth of an inch outside of my template to cut to and then I'm gonna use a flush trim bit and this flush trim bit gives me a nice smooth edge matching my template perfectly. Then I can remove the double stick tape to reveal what lies beneath. And if you're wondering, the top is about 44 inches long and 13 inches wide at the ends. I cut this triangular piece of plywood to basically be the locator for the center section. And it will also house the wireless charger for my phone. Now we can check the fit. Yep, fits. Oh, hey, would you look at that? I screwed up again. Turns out I made that center divider too tall. So, gave it a little trimmy trim on the table saw. And now we have a vertical A-frame. So I'm using the Doug Mocket integrated wireless charger. I actually used this on a previous project and I thought it worked really well, so I'm incorporating it into this one. And this is not a sponsored video, but I'll leave a link below if you want to check it out. Then back at the table saw, I'm just cutting the outer legs of the stand to length and width. And over at the drill press, I'm using a Forstner bit because I'm going to recess some little rubber feet into the bottom of these legs. I'm using the domino to attach said legs to said top. You could easily use dowels for this as well. But I have to adjust the depth on these because the top is only 5 eighths of an inch thick. So instead, I have more of the domino going into the leg and less going into the top so I don't burst through. Okay, now it's confession time. All right, so I actually built and filmed the footage for this project over a year ago. I just never posted it on YouTube. But as I was building it, I was posting progress shots on my Instagram feed. 
And that's when my buddy Matt Moore asked, hey, aren't you concerned about wood movement? I mean, you have end grain of the walnut glued directly to the long grain of the white oak. And I'll be honest, I hadn't even considered it and I'm quite embarrassed by it. I think I was so hung up on the design of having these cool sporty stripes meet this way with the walnut that it just didn't occur to me. So as I started thinking, I thought, you know, since this is for myself, who really cares? Let's just see what happens. I mean, what could really happen? But as I started thinking even more, I said, you know, this might be a good experiment to see exactly what happens when you do something wrong and when you do something right when it comes to accounting for wood movement. So I'm going to turn the camera around here and show you exactly what I did and what happened in the last year. Okay, here's the side I screwed up where I have walnut end grain glued directly to the long grain of the white oak. And as you can see here, this line right here, it's actually opened up. You can see white, the glue coming through, and the same thing on this seam here. So this tried to expand and contract and couldn't, so it just split. Now it's flush on the front and the back, but if this was for a client, obviously this would be no good, and I would take this back immediately and make a new one. Now on this side, where it was done correctly to allow for expansion and contraction, the walnut is actually contracted about a 32nd of an inch there and the same in the back. Now I do remember this summer that this was actually a little bit proud of that. So it has definitely moved a little bit. Now overall, it's only moved about a 16th of an inch, which you might say, hey, that's not bad, but this is only over 11 inches. Magnify that on a kitchen table, 40 inches wide. And if you put a breadboard in and don't do it correctly, bad things can happen. And that's also why you never want to build a mitered frame around a tabletop, because as this wants to expand and contract, it'll just pop open. And here's where the painful repair process began. As I said, I lopped off that one end. I remorticed my dominoes with the outer ones being elongated on the loose setting. Same thing on the white oak section. And I laid out for my holes to drill for the draw bore. Now I am only gluing in one side of the domino. In the walnut side, those will float except for the center one, which will be solid, and that will allow for wood movement from the center outwards. I offset the hole locations, roughly 1 32nd to 1 16th of an inch, make my own dowels, and when I drive those dowels home, that will essentially bend around that offset and pull that joint tight together. And then I can cut them flush and flick them with reckless abandon. Uh-oh, what does that mean? Oh God. That's sticking out too far, isn't it? Oh boy. So one of the functions of this monitor stand is to allow me to slide both keyboards underneath. That way when I'm not using it, they won't be subjected to kitty paws walking all over them. Yeah, I'm looking right at both of you. Rascals. And now I had to modify that center support section for a third time, no wait, second time. Ah, who cares at this point? Cut that off, glued on another piece and then plunge for some dominoes, finally, to get this thing actually attached and bang it home. Oh wait, I forgot. I added a little access hole for the wire so this thing could sit flush on the desktop. Oh, and here's a picture of another version I made with no center section, just completely long grain the whole way. Turned out much better, but anyway, back to this one. I'm using Rubio Monocoat Pure, which is an oil and wax blend. Spread it on, scrub it in, wipe it off. And now the rubber feet. These are just self-adhesive rubber feet I'm putting on there. Nothing special. And now I can install the aforementioned wireless charger. A little help from Lola. You can see why I put that cutout in the back. And now we can install. Again, with the help of these two knuckleheads. Oh! Thanks for the reminder. Please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be alerted of all of my upcoming videos. And now to test the wireless charger. Success. And as I mentioned before, I wanted to be able to slide those keyboards underneath when not in use. And we're all done. And apparently Lola had different decorating ideas than I did. Well, certainly lots of failures on this one, but also lots of lessons learned. So I hope everyone enjoyed, and we'll see you on the next one.